Hey, uh, I'm Santosh uh, from Walmart. So I'll be talking about the LEAF project, which simplifies the uh, EBP, uh, managing the EBP program's life cycle uh, in the virtual world. So this is basically developed in Walmart as a seed code and given to the LFN. So the LFN is now actually uh, owning this project, but we are one of the contributors to that. So I'm not going to talk about, uh, okay, let's go to this. I'm not going to talk about it. This is because everybody would have seen this and everybody is familiar with eBPF. I think uh, I'm not going to cover this, but just basically we have to want to tell you that uh, we in organization, we use all of this and the leaf, uh, all of the hook points, but uh, the leaf today uses basically predominantly XTB and TC programs. Let's talk about what is LEAF? Actually, LEAF gives the complete lifecycle management for eBP programs in the kernel. Why it is called LEAF? Because it's lightweight, eBPF, application foundation. That's what it's named as a LEAF. So why it came? So in Walmart, we had a challenge of uh, the large scale. We wanted to start eBP programs to monitor our networks and all those use cases like security, monitoring, as well as the networking use case. So the challenge we were facing, like we have thousands of nodes, how do we manage this? The managing was the big challenge. And how do you multiple eBP programs to be uh, handled so that the limitations in the kernel gives is only one eBP program to be connected or attached to the interface. So there was a question earlier, so I will cover that in this next slide. So what is the leaf gives us is basically simple, APIs to add EB programs, remove EB programs, as well as it provide you the dynamically configuring the on the runtime. You don't need to restart the EB programs. It can dynamically configure uh, the values and any policies you want to set. Similarly, you can, this gives you advantage of replacing proprietary application hardware with the blazing fast, fast code eBPF. So we had a challenge here is we had a hybrid environment. We have private cloud, we have a, a public cloud. So we need to have a one solution across all. So when you have a private cloud, you are DC, you can have a hardware appliances and you can manage itself. But when it comes to the public uh, cloud, we need to have a software-based solution. We cannot install any hardware on the uh, public cloud. So uh, if you take the public clouds data collected from them, it will be too expensive. So we had to come up with the EBP programs which we can handle or we, we, we can give the solution for the uh, our enterprise. Okay. So we kind of a came like uh, EVP program as a service, which can uh, execute the multiple programs in the chain. So, so it's basically the all the EVP programs are including community driven are in the EVP package repository. So I'll be covering that going forward. Yeah. Okay, this is how our platform look like. This is, this LeafD is kind of a orchestrating layer which runs on the node and it will actually change the multiple EBV programs as is shown in the diagram and it will accepts the API to add or remove or uh, modify the configurations. This is a simplified version of the high level architecture diagram and we have a EBV package repository where these EBV programs are stored. So it can be a leaf community driven, it can be a vendor or any third party or other community developed EBP programs can be downloaded and it can be loaded on the uh, loaded on the node and it can be managed by the leaf. Okay, let's go one step down on the leaf D. What all the major features? So orchestrates multiple EBP programs on the node. So, and also the, the loading is done by the native uh, and this entire LeafD is written in Golang and it uses the Celium's eBPF library, Golang library to load uh, eBP programs and also the, all the uh, APIs it provides us to the chain and everything. So it provides the, hook, uses the hook points today in the Leaf is XTP and TC only, others are yet to come. So we have not open sourced those. And also we have enabled, uh, you can chain across multiple interfaces though. So 
we run our uh, leaf is on the gigantic edge nodes, which actually protects our systems from the DDoS attacks, as well as there are many use cases are there, which are, when it comes to the programs, I will explain. So there are, there are multiple interfaces, some cases. So you can run those EV programs on the multiple interfaces also. It enables that. Then we have provided the secure web API to manage the EVP programs and also the cross-platform support. So we wanted to go with the Windows 2. So we have done some basic running the XTP programs. Now Microsoft has got some limitations or they have to fix some things. So we are waiting for that. And uh, they have only XTP today on Windows and they'll be going for the TC also. They started working on that. Then we will have the both. So the first thing to leave to start was the EV, uh, limitations on the multi, running multiple EVA programs. So we can run only one for the per interface. So how do you solve this problem? This was a problem we were facing uh, five years ago. And then we had developed like a root programs for XTP and TC routes, which will actually attach to the uh, interface. And the next program which it comes, it'll actually link to it as a, uh, the program ID, there is a tail call, and the, every program at the end, it has to call the tail call, and the tail call will actually context switch from one EBA program to the other EBA program. So if between, you might heard about XTP drop or TC drop. So those, only if it's XTP pass, the kind of thing, it will call the tail program before the XTP pass, then it will go to the next program. So as its diagram is shown in this, so all these uh, TC and EBP programs, TC and XTP programs are loaded by the uh, leave D. This will remove the limitation of the earlier, we didn't add a library calls. So that time we used to use the C, C programs and invoke the C calls to load or attach to the interface. But now uh, since the Cilium uh, EBF library provides us the API, so we use those APIs and call uh, from the leave D and we attach that. And similarly, we link those multiple programs on the chain. No, no, it won't allow you like that. Yeah, no, it won't allow you like that. So because the, there is a verifier is there, right, in the middle of that. So correct. You cannot call the next EVA program. It's a program FD is show, stored in, attached to the previous. When it loads, it will load. It's not a static. It's a dynamic. Yeah. So that's how it is. It loads, it gets a new EVA program FD, and then it will update on that. Uh, that's what I mentioned in the diagram. So there is no lim I, earlier there was a limitation of one EBP program can be of one case instructions like 1024. <coughs> now I think the five dot XA they are made as a one mega uh, instructions can be stored. So that time those limitations was like we cannot have one program having everything gigantic program. So we need to break every program as a smaller chunks and we have to chain it. So for Walmart there are so many programs so we need to. So, any any questions on this? Then I go to the next. So you have a EB program, okay? So it is it has to be inserted between the existing program. There are one or two are there already. Two programs are there. You want to insert after two or three, uh, after two or as a three or between one and two. So you want that kind of a thing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no. So I'll tell you that. In the API, so when you go to the next slide, there is an API, there is a sequence ID. The sequence ID will tell you that which sequence you want to insert in the chain, okay? Yeah, correct. If you want to three, if you give, there are already two are running. If you give it a three, it will go at an end, uh, put it at the end. So you should make sure that when you put, you cannot put the two. It will remove the two and it will put this. So it will overwrite this and it will just remove the chain. The chain will broke. So the sequence ID should be known when you, uh, 
program to be attached. So which sequence ID according to based on that it will insert. In the online, I think uh, the, it's still not clear for some of those on the online what leaf exactly is. So the question is uh, how is leaf useful with Cilium? Uh, ah, okay. So, so maybe if you can clarify again. <laughs> so. Yeah, uh, good question. Uh, so, this was initially built for the virtual machines. Okay, the VMs. We have edge edge servers all running, uh, uh, taking a traffic. All uh, Walmart traffic comes inside the edge servers, and which does the proxy and all. So, on that note, we have running Leaf. It started with that first. Okay, and uh, for the Cilium integration is, we have we have been working on it. But uh, once we have a solution, we will definitely do the open source. There is a limitation on Cilium. I'm going to tell that. <laughs> I was talking to him. So there is a limitation on Cilium. You cannot have uh, attached more than one EBP program. They give only hook point to attach one, e one EBP program to their existing Cilium uh, uh, workflow. Okay, the traffic can attach one custom EBP program. And the second limitation is the program should be written in a certain format. Limitations. So, and it has to be compiled by the Cilium compiler. Okay, then only you can attach. So, I've already spoken to him. These two, two limitations, if you remove, then we'll give you the support. <laughs> so, that is where we are blocked now. So, okay, due to the limitations, <coughs> yeah. it's still not uh, used with Leaf now. Cilium. Correct, correct. That, okay. That's a challenge on my table, so I need to solve that. So, I've spoken to him. <laughs> okay. In the, in the previous slide, uh, uh, right, uh, you mentioned it provides the health information metrics. The, correct, the, correct. So yeah. it, it's per node on all the EP programs running on that particular node, you collect all the Correct. metrics. Correct. Uh, similar to what recently uh, Netflix outsourced uh, BPF top, which collects all the so, EV programs metrics kind of. Is it similar to that or it's different from that? I have not explored that to be honest. Okay. So how it does is the, basically <coughs> these EV programs are attached to and managed by the leaf. So it, it has got all the program FTs in their maps, okay, it will hold that in the structures. And then it will monitor that whether it is up or it is down uh, or the status. And also if there is any user programs are running uh, to manage this because some of the use cases are there, they required user programs. Uh, other than attaching, they have user programs like, for example, we have IPFIX, which generate the flow data and it has to send to the collectors, like similarly mirroring we have. So the continuously it will sending to the UDP port, which there is a collector, which is uh, viewed by the infosec, continuously the existing traffic pattern. So their user program will running. So in that scenario, what Leaf does is making sure that user program and the, the kernel program, which is their object file, both are running healthy. If it is not running, immediately it generates the metrics and send the alert system, will trigger the alert and uh, okay. user will get the alert that this but, is, is gone down. But it's not keeping track of how much of CPU is concerned by that particular program and all those things like just like top, no? Um, no, we don't uh, okay. provide those things. We have some things like we have in the leaf that we wanted to limit the CPU consumption. The initially when we developed, we thought that user space may take so much time, so much uh, CPU uh, to process all the packet, uh, making the flow packets and sending to the collectors. And actual application may not get stuff for the resources. But we didn't see that. So kind of a thing, there is an option. So that's a, we, we can put the boundaries, like uh, CPU so much percentage and this much. So beyond that it goes, it will uh, block it. Yeah, it will block. So this is a very important topic because of the leaf is, Chaining is the its capability is become it is useful for everybody, all the enterprises. Okay. No dynamic, no no dynamic. Yeah. So make sure that the sequence number should not collide. Okay. So you have one or two programs. There is a sequence number in the payload. I will show you. I will walk through that. The payload how it will be. So you have one two and you want a third program. So what you is the best thing to do is move the two to three and insert the two, the, the another. Program uh, path, I want to stop the execution. I yeah. want to I want to stop in the middle. I don't want to continue till five. Middle of the two, I, if I want to uh, stop. So, so you want to stop the program itself, or you want to the stop chain. that traffic stop chain? Stop the chain, yes. Yeah, the traffic which you want to st Correct. stop there. Based on some uh, yeah, that, parameters, I want to stop. Yeah, yeah. You you can put the condition there, 
and you can call the XTP pass or TC, okay. Okay. So it'll sure. automatically go to the, up the stack. It doesn't go to the wallet. So basic, uh, on certain condition, you don't call the tail call. Only the tail call. Only will the tail the, call will proceed. Switch, okay. Right? Okay. If you don't call the uh, tail call before the tail call, you put this XTP pass or uh, TC, okay. So it will go up the stack. Okay. It will cover the, that use case. Thanks. So there are config maps. So where you have the config maps are basically you want to suppose in the rate limiting you want to set the rate, the connection limit you want to have a certain connections or you want to uh, suddenly you want to increase number of ports. Uh, you have you have monitoring 80 and uh, 80 and 443. Now you want to add one more port. So dynamically you can update in API and you can give the update API and it just goes and update the uh, the config maps put those uh, values, then the next traffic uh, packet comes, it'll go and validate that whether this rule is applied to that particular port or not. So it's a dynamic, you don't need to restart or anything uh, to do, do, uninterpreted it'll do. And it leverage with the BPF maps. Everybody knows that what is BPF map, right? It'll allow you to talk between user program and kernel program. Next is a, metrics map. So now some of the maps, this is also one of the use case for us that these EBP programs generate so many metrics, the XTP or TC programs. Now how to leverage them to the Grafana dashboard or whatever the collectors or what, uh, we want to do it. So now we cannot have that uh, everywhere to run the certain uh, hosting system. So what LeafD does is all EBP of maps, right, whatever the generated by the programs, so it actually goes and uh, formatted with the PromQL and it will uh, publish the endpoint and there is a telegraph which will actually scrape that endpoint and go to the centralized storage point where we want to keep the metrics. There are some compliance issues, we want to keep the metrics for so many long, so all those things. So it will happen. So in the metrics also, I have shown here, this is not visible, how the configuration look like, how to provide the configuration. Here basically it will give the map name, the key value, and the aggregator. So aggregator represents that scalar is nothing but the counter. As is how it comes the value, it will publish it. But there are some things like average you want. So you want a window of 10 seconds or 20 seconds window. So you want an average of 10 seconds value. So similarly, max rate is also maximum in that particular window. The 10, min, uh, 10 seconds iterations. So what is the max value it got, uh, value it got? So for example, we create the rate, uh, rate per second uh, new SYN requests are coming. So that is co controlled by the max rate. So in the last 10 seconds or one second, how many uh, packets it is in flown? So that count will be given in this. So whatever the max value, it will keep a hold of it. So these are all metric maps. You can clearly see that how it will do that leaf DBP monitor maps. Uh, there is endpoint 8898 uh, listening and you can just curl to it, you'll get this kind of output point. Uh, the, which is the EBP program it is running, connect limiting or rate limiting, this is a vagrant host name, which interface it is running, and it is also gives the which map name, and this is it creates the dynamically naming, and what is the value here, so you can see those values. So this is what I was talking about, the monitoring. And similarly, health also it gives in the metrics, uh, the BPF running map, so it says that it is running or not. Okay, now comes the, the API. So it provides the secured web APIs. So th these are the APIs that are provided by those, like a post APIs. So update the config, add a new EBP program, remove the EBP program on the node, and similarly, just see the information, what all the, uh, list the EBP programs running on the particular interface, and it is enabled with the MTLS. I think everybody is aware of the mutual TLS, where uh, zero trust policy, client and server should have uh, its identity. Once it's valid only, it can process the backend, process the request. So, and also it supports the um, EBA package repository, downloading the packages from the different repository. It don't need to be a only one. You can configure each EBA program can be uh, of, uh, from the multi, uh, of some repository. You can give that URL, it will uh, download. It can be HTTP or uh, HTTPS also it supports. As long as in the system, you should have those certificates. On the node, you should maintain those certificates. 
Okay. Uh, question. So uh, this looks similar to the Yang and GNMI uh, ecosystem of the network, which is, do you have something com uh, kind of interoperable or like? No, I don't. Yeah, this is a JSON payload. So we will give it to the <laughs> API. So basically, I was telling, right, there is a sequence ID here. Uh, the, uh, so it, it says the which program to be run, rate limiting in this case, sequence ID it says, artifact uh, it gives, and also the map name. This, this map name is uh, nothing but the program uh, FD storing map name. So the next program, it will be hooked up to this, and the tail call will call this to jump to the next. The context switching will happen. So LeafD should be knowing that which map is configured to switch over. So then the version, and then it is enabled or disabled. Uh, disabled means it stops. The program type today is suppose XTP and TC, and this is just a payload configurations. And uh, the map arguments. Any questions? Sir? So the map arguments are actually the the, the arguments config arguments which will go and upload. Uh, uh, deploy on the those config maps, BPF maps. This is the map name and the values. And uh, similarly, for the metrics maps, uh, it basically it will say the which key to read and what is the aggregator, and it will publish. It will read on that format and it will publish. And we also want the object file name and the entry function name. So the object file is when we when the program is loaded. So it will use this object file to load the program, EBP program. And uh, the entry function name is the function which is invoked uh, to start. And uh, when it starts that program, that will be the first program in that EBP program, OK? And that will be the entry function name. It will invoke that. And then uh, it will attach to the FD will be of FD of that will be attached to the previous program also. That's how it maintains the chain. So today we support that XTP and the similarly TC and the ingress and TC egress program. So this is the format of the payload. And there's one more key I'm missing that uh, EBPF, EPR uh, package about the URL also you can give, where it will actually download from uh, whichever the URL want to download. Okay. So these are the EBPF programs we have open sourced. Um, so the IPFIX flow exporter, basically it creates the uh, and sends the flow logs to IPFIX format to the collector of choice of server, variety of network and security use cases, okay? So this use case we came like, when you go to the public uh, public cloud, we wanted to generate these messages to our infosec. So to come out of this appliance world in private cloud, we, we uh, wrote a IPFIX program, which actually reads the packet which comes in from that, in, uh, on the, that node on the interface, and then it'll generate the IPFIX flow messages and sends to the collector, which will be analyzed by the uh, info security on the organization. So next is the rate limiting and connection limiting. So everybody's aware of DDoS attacks and uh, sin flooding, all those kind of uh, use cases. And uh, Walmart uh, runs the, uh, during the holiday period, right? It is the largest infrastructure it runs. And if you're, uh, holiday means Thanksgiving and those uh, time duration. So we get, we had once the attack, similar time. So if you get the the 20,000 of request goes to land into the one server, the actual proxy or whatever the application is running on our infrastructure can go, starve for the resources and it can, meltdown can happen. And once the meltdown happens, then it is a very hard and uh, the revenue loss will be huge. So that time we got a use case, the how do you block at the server level our edge servers to run this programs and protect that. So we actually configure this, how much rate, uh, the, the rate limiting is how many SIN requests, uh, new requests can come per second uh, on the node. And uh, the connection limiting is persist, how many persistent connection it can hold at the given second, okay? So we have set those limits. If it goes beyond that limit, it automatically does the XTP drop uh, call and uh, we will discard that packet. And this way, it will it will uh, protect our applications not to starve by on the resources. Um, 
and these values are already set with the, we run the load, load testing, different type of load testing, and we decide that, okay, this size of the node can hold up to the this limit, and we'll set those values, and uh, before these events, we'll set those values. And we can dynamically change whenever we need it, like using those APIs which I showed in the previous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes, yes, true, true, yeah. So even we have uh, bot mitigation and all, all those things different is there, but in the upper layer, this is the first layer which hits this, and if you miss there, there is a bot uh, mitigation in there. And these thresholds are a little high, so it's not that, uh, yeah. There is a customer journey impact, definitely, yeah. They all have a bad experience. User experience will be there. The next is the Santosh question from online. Uh, okay. So uh, the question is, what kind of programs are supported by Leap? Is it uh, the programs that uses those two hooks, yeah. or the programs that are in the repository, or no, bo both? No, no. The programs are in the EBV package repositories are using these hooks only, XTP and TC hooks. But any program that uses those two hooks can be used with Leap. Correct. It can be used with Leap. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. That's what I want to clarify. Because their understanding is only those in the repository no. can be supported with Leap. No, 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 okay. no. As long as we give you dot os, we get the object files, we can load it. Mm -hmm. And if you have that, those uh, payloads are there. So if you give us a map to how to chain, and if you give a proper sequence number, we'll automatically handle everything in the chain. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, one more question. Uh, on the IPFlix uh, flow exporter, uh, is there already some sampling? Because usually IPFlix involves sampling, yeah, uh, efficient yeah. sampling. So does it include sampling? We have some sampling. It's like a NetFlow format, a NetFlow, oh. you know, that NetFlow algorithm, so it's a similar way. So it does on the node. That's why the, we need a user program. So, so the user program does some minimum sampling, and then it will go to the our uh, AI analyzer or whatever those, and then it will do, does some more analysis there. Is it possible to do uh, sampling like S-Flow, like raw packet samples? We depend on the five tuples, uh, source, source, destination, IP protocol, and this. And then we have some sequence numbers and some app ID, some things, and all we do the some kind of sampling. Yeah. Okay. Some basic, but not much. OK. The traffic mirroring scenario where we got the use cases when we want the existing traffic pattern comes into the system. We wanted to replicate that uh, kind of a session replicated want to do or deep packet analysis we want to do uh, things like. So for this to achieve, we need two interfaces on that node. So the first, because if you use the same interface, then the income ingress traffic will be hit badly to send the traffic to the collectors. So in this scenario, what it does is basically it gets the traffic, then BPF clone redirect will redirect to the other interface, the packet. The other interface will be tunneled with the your collector. And as soon as it put it on that, it, the, the collector will be collected and does uh, certain analysis. It, it can do the uh, any analysis you want to do. And we can set those filters. There are, uh, you can see the repository. We can set filters like you don't need to all the traffic to see. And you want uh, mobile traffic, or we are looking at certain mobile traffic patterns and some 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 website traffic you want to do, then only those uh, filter traffic can be sent. Otherwise, it is something like we are overloading our internal traffic to send to the collectors. So we have set some filters. OK. Uh, is there any questions on this? Because No, no, BPF clone redirect, it does on the kernel itself. So, the, no, no, there is a rate limiting and connection limit anyway limits though, actually. You don't, that is controlled up to 80% of the resources can be utilized. Beyond that, it automatically drops, those numbers are. So, yeah, these all four are running on our ecosystems. So, um, yeah. So this is till now it's developed. So yeah, we have some limitations. Uh, like we wanted to 
our roadmap has a little bit changed because Windows was our plan, but uh, the Microsoft has shifted little focus uh, on the contribution on the open source because of the industrial uh, slowdown. So that's why we have removed some of the Windows use cases. We want to do like a hot, hot restart where the, the challenge we are facing is today is like when you restart the leaf, the EB programs is to restart, graceful restart. So we don't want to restart EB programs. We need to do a hot restart where new versions we want to deploy of the leaf, the EB program should not be uh, interfered. So those are the things and some, uh, and we definitely need more contributors. Okay. So this is on the package repository. Uh, these are the uh, plans. So I'm not going to go into detail on this. This is a simple development environment. Within five, less than three minutes, we can bring it up. So if anybody wants to try uh, writing EBP programs, we can uh, we can go to the, there is a leaf arc. There's a link is given. Uh, dev environment. We can actually just go and do a vagrant up, or you can create a VM and there is a setup Linux. VM run script is there, it'll set up everything for you. It deploy, create the package repository, download everything, builds everything, and also uh, then you have to call the API to load all those things. Okay, that was the signing use case security. So this is still, this for the Hyper-V was for the Windows. I think it will need to be removed. Okay, I can talk about it. So we wanted to, see once we keep open, like right, any EBM programs can be loaded on your nodes. So we don't want to allow unknown malicious EBM program to be getting it up. So we will put certain signing requirements so that if you have certain, uh, the BPF allows you to signing the programs. If you have certain signatures on the code, first it validates, the verifies validate, then only it will allow to load you. So if you don't have the sign, then it won't allow you to load. No, no, you can do it. I, uh, you can do it, but when you put it on a production, we can't allow like that, okay? So you need to have some signing uh, restrictions. Yeah, so I don't know, we have time, I can play the demo. Let me. No, no, Leaf also will do the signing. So when you implement, it will be standard signing. Everybody will have to have. Which one? The root one. No, no, root one is we developed by the Leaf team only for us. So that we know that we will download from particular inner uh, repository. So whenever it comes from the external, we have to write the policies for that. So, so that when we want to download from somewhere outside and we want to deploy, right? Yeah, then we need that to security purpose. And if you don't put that restrictions, then the enterprise is, everything goes. Yeah, this is, um, I'm just playing it, uh, how to build. Once you do a vagrant up, so before doing a vagrant up, you open the config uh, YML and then uh, you basically check where from leave the code path has to be picked up. And then you open, go into the vagrant and just do the make. So it will build the leave the code. And, uh, and without any EBA program running, it takes about 0 0.02 seconds, uh, somewhere around 200 requests I'm sending using the Hey tool. Um, in the diagram, everything is there, so I thought I'll explain here. Um, Anybody has any questions, you can ask, okay. So basically I'm checking here is the BPF tool prog show. So there is no EBA programs are running here now. So and now I'm actually running the Yeah. 
Didn't this happen? Anybody has a question? Take a moment. There is Swagger API. I'll talk about it, yeah. The Swagger API window will come, yeah. So now it's already LFD is loaded. Still no programs are loaded. Now I think I'll go to the, um, so I've used the same, um, so these are the APIs are there, Swagger API. So you can just go there. Um, I just did last night this, so. May not be <laughs> slow in the so there is a payload there, payload JSON. Just copy the entire content and just load it. So so there is, I'm telling that the rate limiting connection limiting, IP fix ingress and egress, all all the EB programs are listed here. We got the response 200. At the same time, we have to go to the. Um, yeah, it actually it loaded everything. So you can see this. Yeah, from here to it loaded everything. And if you see the BPF proc show, uh, you can see the different programs. Uh, XTP root is there. It should be rate limiting, connection limiting. Then it comes the TC ingress route, ingress flow, uh, egress route, egress flow. And actually, I, I'm uh, after that I, I running again. Uh, I think I'm learning the traffic mirroring. Also, I load it later. So this actually the output of what all things are running on the that node. So it gives that. If you want to see the interface based, the same thing, you just give the interface name on what all the programs are only attached to that interface. <coughs> In this diagram, it's only one interface, so it will be the same, same output. Yeah. So packet will go to beginning. On the fly? Yeah, yeah, it can on the fly. Yeah. So anybody want to contribute, you go and go to the repository. There is a GitHub link. Go and check how it has written sample. It's very easy to learn. So you can just copy the code and then you can put your business logic and then it can be done. In the first release, we had a problem because we need a user program. We had a certain conditions to be put like uh, user program should load and all those things. The last release we did in November, we removed that uh, limitations. Uh, though, so we don't need attaching using user program. It's completely done by LFT. And it requires a 5.15 kernel. Otherwise the EBP libraries, uh, which Cilium will not allow you to load, 5.13 and above. Yeah. So about the now that is a future announcement, IPv6 support. No, no, so today, all the snipping packets, right, we do rate limiting and all, uh, deep packet analysis, we think, assume that it is IPv4 packet. Yeah. yeah, you can load that. We don't limit it. It is, it is in the package repository. Okay. Yeah. IPv6, then we'll support. No, no, we don't limit those. So, but connection even rate limiting doesn't support IPv6. So whatever there in the UV package repository today is limited to the IPv4 only. So, yeah. So I think I just load the traffic mirroring also. And then, it's been too long. I 
think it gets loaded. Uh, Traffic mirroring gets loaded here because I need to get you know. So there is, yeah. So libd runs in the containers. Okay, pod is there, but we have not open sourced it. We will do it in the future. Okay, and uh, TC programs definitely run, not XCP programs on the container, and. Uh, most of the use cases for us now, uh, in the XCP use cases, like layer four load balancer and all, we have EBP programs. So those are all runs on the, uh, not for, I'm sorry. Yeah, Bumblebee was also there, yeah. I, I've seen that, yeah. So we have that uh, traffic mirroring also is loaded. So. These are the predefined dashboards are there. Uh, so it actually shows that traffic coming in. Now basically this is running. Yeah. Okay. I think we'll go for another one minute or one. And yeah, this is the last case. And yeah, now when you set the load, right, it will take much longer time because the rate limiting and connection is running. So earlier it was 0 0.04 seconds. Now it is take a lo much longer time because we have put some limits. So basically that was the thing. I'm just showing that. It's very simple. Use the dev environment and you can just run. So you can see that there's some Spike is coming and there's also, it is dropping also connections yeah. because the limit is set to, yeah. I'll just stop this. Yeah, I just wanted to thank those contributors. So for the leaf, these are the contributors now majorly, uh, Microsoft, Wipro, as well as the uh, University of Delhi interns. So I want more contributors and adoption also. I always welcome. So that is the intent of this uh, all going to the events and presenting, we need more contributors and adoption also. And um, it's proven in enterprise, so that's why I wanted. So these are the references, uh, leave.io, you can go there and check, as well as our GitHub is repo is there, and our wiki page is there, you can go and refer, and we have blocks are released uh, on different things, uh, mirroring, control plane and everything, and yeah. So we have a weekly TSC meeting on Tuesdays, uh, 8.30 to 9.30 IST, 8.30 to 9.30 PM, sorry. I did not put PM list. And any Q&A, no, then I think thank you. If there's